Hey Summoners, welcome to another Pro Guides video. We haven't done something like this in a while, but we're here with a guide on playing assassins. I know a lot of you guys are interested in learning them, after all, a lot of them are really popular right now. Aside from that, who doesn't enjoy watching a montage of one-shots and giant outplays here and there? Assassins are some of the biggest playmakers in the game, so we want to cover topics in this video that'll help you play them better, whether you've never played one before or have some games under your belt. For our question of the day, what are some champion-specific tricks that you know about on Assassins? When playing Fizz, I know that one way to make landing your ultimate easier is to queue through a minion first to close the distance between you and your opponent. Are you guys getting ganked on your own lane, constantly demolished? Then don't worry, we got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly help you level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Night Blue, Bunny Foo Foo, Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now. All right, let's get started with the video. Okay, before we talk about the finer details, one thing we need to go over is what your role as playing an assassin is. No matter which assassin you play, there's one thing they all have in common, burst damage. Although what each champion specifically does will vary, they usually have certain factors in their gameplay that are shared across the board. Assassins usually have high mobility or backline access, take turrets rather quickly, snowball incredibly hard, and again can deal high damage in a short amount of time. As a result of these strengths, assassins are some of the best candidates in the game for picking off opponents or bursting down carries in teamfights. This means that your goal as an assassin is to take out a carry on the enemy team. However, this isn't always going to be plausible, or something might have gone wrong earlier into the game. In cases like these, secondary missions such as split pushing or trying to make picks on anyone you can find can take priority. When you get extremely fed and start snowballing games, you have the means to hard carry team fights with your high damage output. But in other games, you'll need to be more creative. Playing each specific assassin is rather different. After all, you've got some notable ones like Zed in the mid lane, Pike down bottom as a support, and junglers like Rengar as well. Generally, however, we can draw some guidelines. As an assassin that lanes, your goal is usually to dominate the laning phase. Assassins are gifted with a lot of burst damage, meaning weak early game champions struggle heavily against the kill pressure they constantly exert. You'll want to use this power advantage to either find solo kills against your opponent, or instead to create opportunities to roam to your other lanes. Play around your cooldowns. Try to find optimal trades to chunk out your opponents and then wait patiently for them to come back up. From there, you can play more aggressively to try and solo kill your opponent. Or instead, play with the wave while your enemies cower in fear. It's pretty important to understand wave management as you'll likely need to roam a lot as an assassin. Having command over minion waves will allow you to maximize the efficiency and effectiveness of your roams. Assassins in the jungle are constantly watching the map. Again, they're trying to snowball, and the best way to do this is by ganking enemies who are overextended or low. After picking up some kills, they become incredibly difficult to deal with as their burst damage makes them some of the most threatening opponents while fed. Junglers can be anywhere on the map, and that isn't very pleasant to know that you could have an Evelyn or Rengar pop out of the shadows and delete you within a second. Let's talk about some conceptual stuff next. One of the most valuable skills you'll need as an assassin is understanding lethal threat. What we mean by lethal threat is the point at which you can deal enough damage to kill an opponent. The stronger you are, the more threat you'll have on an opponent, of course. If you had a rough start to a game, you'll of course need to tread more carefully and pay attention to how much health your opponent has. When you're 15-0 and basically smurfing on your opponents, well, you'll basically have lethal threat on anyone in the enemy team since you'll basically one-shot anyone from full health. Nevertheless, the value of this skill really comes into play at all stages of the game. During the laning phase, it's crucial to know your damage output and have an idea of when you're able to kill your opponent. This is how snowballing the game usually starts. While your opponent may be rather healthy and feel safe, if you're aware of and also know how you can kill your opponent at any given moment, you can catch them off guard and pick up kills on them. Of course, this also means that you'll also need to know how to set up those kills during the lane phase. With practice on a champion and running through matchups, you'll be able to learn things like what kind of trades you'll need to take beforehand and what levels are best to look for fights. Honestly though, the laning phase is easy mode in terms of lethal threat as you'll lane every game. As a result, you'll have a rather consistent idea of how much damage you can deal during the early game. The longer a game goes, however, there's more room for variance depending on so many factors. It's going to take a lot of practice, but you'll have to get a feel for how much damage you can deal based on how fed you are and how fed an enemy is. 
Sure, you might be used to one-shotting a vein after finishing a Dusk Blade, but what if they're fed and managed to pick up an early Phantom Dancer? Even worse, what if they chose to buy Ninja Tabby instead of Berserker's Greaves? It's unlikely anyone can teach you stuff like this, and most players who are knowledgeable in this game usually understand it instinctively over anything else. Incorporate this into your gameplay and constantly assess and learn whether or not you have the ability to kill an enemy. Like we mentioned before, sometimes you aren't going to be in a situation to try and kill certain carries on the enemy team. Maybe the enemy marksmen and their support are just too powerful for you to successfully assassinate them. It'll be like that sometimes, and you have to realize that diving in for a kill that simply isn't possible is borderline insanity. Hopefully, if you do end up making this mistake, it's an honest one, and you learn from it as you develop a better understanding of your damage output. This is also why split pushing is an important concept you'll need to come to understand as an assassin. There's a lot of content out there in regards to how to split push. In fact, we even have a guide on our own channel called the only split pushing guide you'll ever need that goes pretty in depth to split pushing. In this video, we'll talk about it from the perspective of an assassin champion though. We'll also assume that you have a general understanding of what split pushing is, aside from the fact that it means pushing a lane separate from the rest of your team. When split pushing, the first thing you need to consider is honestly how quickly your specific champion takes turrets. Assassins are generally pretty good split pushers, but not because of their speed in regards to demolishing turrets. They definitely aren't the slowest by any means, however. Champions like Nocturne and Echo can take them extremely quickly because of the items they build and their abilities. Others, like LeBlanc, however, definitely don't excel at breaking turrets. So why do assassins that aren't that great at it want to split push then? Split pushing doesn't always have to lead to taking a turret. This is because whether or not you manage to take a turret, you're creating pressure. If left alone, you will take that turret eventually, whether it takes you 5 seconds or 20. As a result, the enemy team is under pressure to send someone to respond. Oftentimes, this can lead to the wrong player coming to match you or someone overextending while clearing a wave. A lot of this is champion specific, but there are tricks you can use based on inference and what information you're able to acquire from the minimap. For example, Nocturne is an assassin champion who doesn't do very well after his initial burst combo. Once he's in, he's in, and there's no backing out. Not the best for team fighting, but he's a great champion for split pushing. If he manages to reach the enemy turret, he takes them pretty quickly with his bonus attack speed and attack damage. However, a common trick Nocturne players will use is that they'll push in the wave and back off into the fog of war. Oftentimes, an enemy player will see that Nocturne has stopped split pushing and assume that he's left. Little do they know, however, that Nocturne is actually sitting behind his minion wave, ready to use his ultimate on whoever catches that wave. This takes the team fighting out of the equation and allows Nocturne to act on his strengths as an assassin, burst damage, and pick making. There's still another scenario as well. A champion like Talon would use this method of split pushing quite often. After hard pushing in a side lane, once again, an enemy player will come catch that wave. However, what makes Talon unique is his ability to quickly traverse the map by jumping over jungle terrain. Theoretically, when someone comes to catch the wave he's pushed in, the rest of the enemy team will be grouped as four or less. Talon can ditch the wave and immediately look for a flank. Since he's quick, his opponent will still be clearing the wave he pushed in, and he'll be able to dive in and start a fight with a numbers advantage. Alternatively, he pretends to do this and instead predicts the path his opponent will take to regroup with his team. He'll hide somewhere on the path and jump out to assassinate his target while they rotate. Ultimately, what you need to take out of this is that split pushing as an assassin doesn't have to be focused on turrets. You can use the pressure split pushing provides to set up kills instead. Specifically in this coming season, there have been some changes to items. Itemization is much more diverse for assassins, so it's important for us to go over some crucial adaptations you can make in game. First up, however, we'll talk about the two bread and butter items for nearly all assassin champions. For physical damage assassins, that's going to be a Dusk Blade of Drakthar, and for magic damage ones, it'll be Luden's Echo. These items provide a bunch of raw damage and have easy build paths, making them the go-to for most assassin champions. After all, an assassin can never have too much damage. Assassins are snowball-y and rely on abusing advantages they have in order to close out games. Building these items provide insane power spikes that will allow them to go for plays and absolutely dominate their opponents off of these power advantages. AP champions don't have much variety in their builds, but there is one choice that most of them can make. Oblivion Orb is one of two items, or three if you include Morellonomicon, which it builds into, that provides flat magic penetration. You can build it to mitigate magic resist early on, and if your opponents don't build any magic resist in response, 
you'll receive an insane power spike as a result of the fact that you'll almost deal true damage to them. For AD Assassins, you have a lot of choices in Sanguine Blade, Edge of Night, Yomu's Ghost Blade, and Umbral Glaive. While all items' effectiveness will depend heavily on the champion building them, you can still build them reactively to the situations you find yourself in. Ghost Blade provides some extra mobility. It might even be worth building this over Dust Blade first if you value the extra roaming pressure it'll provide. Otherwise, it'll still be a great second or third item as the bonus movement speed serves both offensive and defensive purposes. Umbral Glaive is extremely cheap and will allow you to clear out vision. This will make it easier to successfully roam and also help you control the map, keeping it darker for the enemy team. Edge of Night provides a spell shield which is honestly invaluable. When the enemy team has a little or even a lot of crowd control, building this item is crucial. Assassins are usually glass cannons, meaning that once you get caught out for a moment, you're gonna get deleted. Edge of Night means that the enemy team will have to work harder to take you out of the picture. If they have very little crowd control, this item gives you a free pass into the back line instead. Sanguine Blade is an item dedicated to split pushing. It provides a bunch of bonus stats when near one or fewer opponents, meaning that you'll take turrets more quickly and also have some extra 1v1 power. This last tidbit will be rather short. Assassins come in all shapes and sizes, but the biggest differentiation between them will usually be whether they rely on AD or AP. Oftentimes, locking in Zed or Talon leads to the timeless problem where your team ends up with too much physical damage. Before you know it, the enemy top laner locks in Malphite, or the enemy jungler locks in Rammus, and you're about to relive some nightmares. It's pretty important to consider damage splits when considering which champion you pick. You'll ideally want to have at least one champion on your team that still deals magic damage if you lock in an AD assassin, and the converse would be true for an AP champion. That concludes this video. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, we really appreciate all the support you guys give us. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel and ProGuides.com, where we have so much content dedicated to helping you guys up your gameplay and push for your goals. Until next time, good luck out there on the Rift.